I'm wearing a Pride shirt today, courtesy of one of my friends. Thank you very much. It's from Disney. I used to work there. If you watch my videos, you know exactly the kind of pain I went through. What is going on, everybody? It is the last video for my A Lesson in Queer Stories series today. Yes, I just dabbed. Yes, I hate myself for that. As the last video in my series, unless y'all want some more, then let me know. I decided to dedicate this video to two individuals who helped start the entire gay rights movement, which led us to today. Happy Pride, woo! And their names are Marsha P. Johnson and Sylvia Rivera. Our lesson begins first with Marsha. Born Malcolm Michaels Jr. on August 24th, 1945 in Elizabeth, New Jersey, Marsha grew up in a devout Christian household where she was told and taught that being a homosexual was lower than a dog. Great way to start your childhood. In 1963, though, Marsha graduated high school and moved to the Big Apple, New York City, where literally everybody who I've talked about has gone so far, actually, now I think about it, with nothing but $15 to her name and a bag of clothes. During this time, she worked as a waitress, but also as a sex worker to make ends meet. During the 60s, though, Marsha became a fixture in the dragon art scene of New York City, specifically in Greenwich Village, to the point where she was even called the mayor of Christopher Street. When she first started performing as a drag queen, though, she went by Black Marsha as her drag name, but soon have dropped that and went as Marsha P. Johnson, which would soon become her permanent, full, legal name. And the P stands for pay it no mind. And this nickname actually, fun fact, helped her get out of a court situation because the judge asked her what the P in her name stood for, and she said, pay it no mind. And he actually laughed and loved it and let her go free. I wish my nickname would do that for me too. But that weird guy who makes YouTube videos and tries to be famous does not exactly roll off the tongue very well. On June 28th, 1969 though, things took a tremendous turn for Marsha's life. Because on that day, in the wee hours of the morning, the Stonewall Riots would occur. A little background on this so you know exactly what we're heading into. As I said in my previous videos, the 1960s and before that, and even a little bit after that too, if you weren't a cisgendered, straight, white individual, your life wasn't really the best. That being said, for this case, the village became a safe haven for the LGBTQ folk. And during this time too, the police were cracking down on the gays as part of a whole public morale kind of situation. But even though the police were cracking down on it, the Mafia found a lucrative business idea from this. They would end up buying up a whole bunch of gay bars in the city and would pay off the police not to intrude on their business. But really though, that did not really stop the police because raids still happened on many gay establishments, even though sometimes there would be corrupt officers who would like tip off the owners of the business to give them a little heads up, be like, hey, by the way, gonna go for a raid, AKA hide your alcohol, hide your everything, cause we're taking up everything over here. However, for this occurrence, the tip-off didn't happen. So here we are, it's early in the morning, you know, Stonewall Inn, 1969, June 28th, everybody's having, having a lovely time, dancing, drinking, wearing what they want to wear, being who they want to be, living their lives. The police end up crashing the party, and they arrest 13 people for not dressing in their appropriate gender. However, after being harassed by the police for so many years, the patrons were fed up and decided to fight back. Specifically, our girl Marsha. While Marsha was resisting arrest, she threw a shot glass across the bar into a wall and shouted, I got my civil rights. And that sparked the entire bar to fight back. And that became known as the shot glass hurled around the world. This then spilled out onto the streets and more crowds came and this sparked the Stonewall riots, which lasted from the 28th to July 1st. The Stonewall riots really showed the LGBTQ's folk just being fed up with being harassed constantly, with being treated as a third-class citizen, and this helped launch and spark the gay liberation movement, which soon came into the gay rights movement, which then soon turned into Pride, which is what we're celebrating today. Thank you, Marsha. But there was someone else there who helped her out with all this, and her name was Sylvia Rivera. Born Ray Rivera on July 2nd, 1951, Sylvia came from a pretty broken household. Her father left her at a young age, her mother committed suicide, and she moved on to live with her grandmother. And her grandmother did not appreciate Sylvia's effeminate behavior, 
ended up kicking her out on the streets at the age of 11, and in order for her to survive, she had to turn to prostitution and sex work. However, she was basically adopted by a local group of drag queens who gave her the name Sylvia. Marsha and Sylvia were very close friends, and they worked together as a team to help be revolutionaries in New York. They co-founded the Street Transvestite Action Revolutionaries, which the second word is still problematic, known as STAR, to help young LGBTQ folk who were homeless and get off the streets and get into a shelter. They helped find the Star House in 1972, which was a homeless shelter for young LGBTQ youth. They also fought for SONDA, which was the Sexual Orientation Non-Discrimination Act in the 70s, and this act was to help prohibit sexual orientation discrimination in terms of job hiring, housing, public accommodation, public service, and pretty much everything. Keep in mind though, this did not go into effect until 2003. That wasn't that long ago. The two kept on help fighting for gay rights, trans rights, street activism, helping out so many homeless youth and trying to get them off their feet and get them noticed by the government to actually start doing some work to help them out. However, tragedy stuck in 1992 when Marsha's body was found floating down the Hudson River. It was initially ruled as a suicide, but everyone who knew Marsha fought against that, including Sylvia herself too, by saying that she was not the kind of person who would do that. The case, fun fact, was actually reopened in 2012 as a possible homicide, and it's currently being worked on right now. Sylvia, though, kept on fighting as a tr activist for gay rights, trans rights, and even for people who were poverty stricken, as well as any discrimination for people of color too. Fun fact, she even got into a fight with the Human Rights Commission and the Empire State Pride agenda in like the late 90s, early 2000s for not doing anything to help transgender folk. At the end though, on February 10th, 2002, Sylvia ended up dying from complications of liver cancer. That does not mean though that their legacies were forgotten. There have been countless documentaries for the two of them. In 2005, the corner of Christopher and Hudson Street was was renamed to Sylvia Rivera Way. There was even a musical based on Sylvia's life in 2007 called Sylvia So Far. And she was also inducted into the Legacy Walk. So when you are out marching and celebrating your pride during the month of June, always remember who to thank, and it was these two. Well, that is it for my Less Than Clear Street series. Wow. Yeah. Hope you enjoyed it. If you want me to actually make some more Lesson in Queer Story videos, because let's be honest, there are a lot of LGBTQ folk throughout history who we have not talked about yet, who I have a list of two people to learn about and talk about, even though I've learned about a lot of them so far. So if you want me to maybe continue the series, let me know. I might make a video here and there. Tell me in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe as well. I make new videos every Friday. And most importantly, make good choices, make interesting choices, live adventurously because it's your life and not mine. And I will see you next time.